Today we're going to start our autumn leaf project. Now this is another situation where we're going to have some complementary colors. And if you look at the reference material, you'll see, like here's a previous painting that we had done. We have kind of our reddish and our greenish areas and they're direct complements of each other. And then we also have kind of a unifying layer of yellow that's underneath everything. So that's how we're going to start. And remember, the complementary colors really kind of cause a, a vibration and an energy between each other, especially when they're laid right against each other. So that's kind of a, a, a reason why it has a nice interest to it. That's what, that's what complementary colors do. If they're mixed together, they actually cancel each other out or neutralize each other. So we're going to start with our yellow layer. And I'm going to use some medium yellow, and I'm going to use my number six brush. <clears throat> I'm going to use medium yellow, and I'm going to use a little bit of white. I don't want it to be super intense. So I'm going to mix up a nice soupy batch of that. So again, for you students watching this video, I want you to pay attention to the consistency of the paint, all right? I want you to try to mimic what I'm doing. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. And you'll have just like a way easier time that if you do that. Um, I don't expect it to be exactly like mine, but if you, if you try to mimic what I do, pay attention to the consistency of the paint and how I'm approaching it, the same brush I'm using. Again, this is a number six brush. This is the uh, Blick Scholastic brushes. And uh, they're really a good bang for the buck. All right, so I may actually use two brushes here for the bigger areas. I may use my number six, but as I get to the, the smaller areas, I can go down to a, a finer brush and, and use something with more of a point. This is a, also a Blick brush. This is probably like a number two. I have a number one here or the number two. It's just a little bit, little bit more, a little larger. So I think I'll start in those little tiny areas because I really want to get this accurate. I'm just going to use some of this, uh, this nice mixture of medium yellow and white. So I'm just going to really carefully paint in this first layer, guys. This doesn't have to be anything other than really being careful. Just really take your time. The drawing of this leaf is important. You want to keep the integrity of the drawing so um, we want to stay within the lines of the drawing. Now you can see I have pencil lines here, but I used my kneaded eraser before I started painting. And I just erased the, the pencil lines just enough so that I can actually see them. I don't, I don't want them very dark for this particular piece, again, because um, if I didn't erase them, they would show through. Remember, watercolor is a transparent medium. So we have to, we have to pay attention to dark pencil lines. They can, they can get in our way. And once you put the paint over, it's, the, the pencil lines are actually kind of sealed in. So we don't want to, um, we don't want to leave dark pencil lines. Alright, so now I got some of those delicate areas. I'm going to kind of work this way. I got some of those smaller little delicate areas, and I'll take my bigger brush and just lay this nice first layer of yellow in there. Now 
with a color like this, you also have to be really careful that your brushes are absolutely clean and your palette is absolutely clean before you start because a color like yellow uh, will get really ugly if it's got, say for instance, blue or violet or, or no, you know another color in there that would just kind of cancel it out and make it look ugly. So you have to be really aware of the fact that your brushes are clean before you start. And if they're not, definitely clean them before you get going. This is medium yellow and white. Now if you make a little splash of paint on your paper where you don't want paint, Try to get it quickly. I have a little dot of yellow right there that I want to get rid of. So as long as I get to it relatively quick, I should be okay. You just want to use a clean brush and um, make sure it's moist. And you can pretty much just scrub it right out. So I'm just adding a little bit of water and I'm pulling a little pigment out just to get a little variation in that field of yellow. So you can see by, by just using a moist brush, I'm able to get a little bit of modeling in this first layer just, just by pulling a little pigment out. It actually works really good. And I'm not just doing it uh, randomly. I'm looking at the leaf and where those little areas that, that are raised you know, between the veins of the leaf, I'm, I'm pulling bits of pigment out there. Okay, now I got some nice variation in that uh, in that yellow it's not just one solid color that'll, that'll be helpful for us as we go further along here and now I'm going to mix up some orange same thing I'm going to mix that orange up but I'm going to throw some white in it it's more of a creamy orange I could also throw a little bit of yellow in too if I wanted Right, so, so one of the things we're going to do here is we're going to actually, if you look at your reference material, you'll see there's a slight outline 
that the leaf has in kind of a, a, a red orange. So we're gonna we're gonna mimic that and we're gonna punch it up just a little bit, just to give us a little bit more of a graphic feel and help define the the shape of the leaf a little better. Right, so that's my number six brush that I just mixed the, the main batch with, and I'm gonna go back and use my smaller number two brush again to do just like I did last time that outlining. I'm going to be very careful So what I want you guys to try to do here is bite off little sections at a time, like I would do from here to here. Then I'd clean your brush off and then just kind of tickle the edges of that, of that orange so it won't have a hard edge there. So you're just going to do this. You have a nice moist brush and you're just kind of tickling that edge so it blends into the yellow. So now I'm going to do another. So I did from here to here. I'm going to do from here to here, or maybe from here to here. I think I can handle that. We just don't. We want to make sure that that orange doesn't dry. So we're doing it in little bites. Remember, I always talk about having a game plan when you're doing a, a watercolor painting, and it really does help. I'll use a little bit more of a bulbous. So I took a small area from here to here, and now I'm just going to blend that orange back into the yellow and soften the edge. That's all I'm trying to do. See the difference between this and this now? It's quite It's so much softer and nicer. So that's just clean water. My brush is moist, it's not soaking wet. All right. Now you can see how nice that looks. It really defines the edge beautifully. So I'm going to keep going. <clears throat> and I'm going to do this all the way around the outside of the leaf. really pays just to be patient guys take your time be careful So what you definitely don't want to do is like outline the entire thing and then try to soften it. It'll probably be dry by the time you get back to the place you started. So again, do these smaller bits where you can actually manage it and not have the paint dry on you. So it's just clean water, a moist brush, not too wet. I'm just letting that orange blend right back into the yellow, nice and soft.
So I'm going to take that same, that same nice pale orange and I'm going to draw a couple of those veins in. Now I got to be careful that I don't have too wet of a mixture here. Now this we want to keep, we want to keep these lines very thin and very delicate because if you look at the leaf, um, they will get thinner as you get to the periphery of the, of the leaf, as the outer edge. All these little veins, these lines, we're going we're gonna to underplay them rather than overplay them. So we'll do a little less than in, that may be in the picture. And um, we don't want them to be looking like railroad tracks, right? We just want them to be very feathery light. And we just want to give a little indication of detail. So you have to, when you're looking at this, <clears throat> you want to look at the arc of that line. So we're really going, the stem is going this way. And we're going, so we're going to be going from where the stem connects at this little seam here. And we're going to go right up to the tip there. And so we want to, we want to keep this um, very thin and light. So I, I think I'll start from here. Keeping this really light and really looking where I'm going. So that worked out great. And now I'm going to do a couple more and I'm going to keep them, try to keep them really thin. And looking like here to here is one. I got one from here to here. I'm going to make these very light again. And I want to keep them thin. And it's the kind of thing we don't want to... Um, overwork. I may even come back and soften the edges of them a little bit because I don't want them to look too too graphic. I want it to look kind of organic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with my brush and I'm just going to kind of soften the edges like we did on the outside a little bit. Right now they're looking a little bit too too hard edged. So I'm just taking a moist brush and I'm just going to do the same thing we did on the outside. Just kind of tickle those edges and soften that the edge of that line back into the leaf itself. And even if it kind of goes away, that's all right. I'd rather them be softer than harsh in something like this. And I'm just taking clean water and just softening that edge. Just kind of dragging my brush over where those little lines are and making them nice and soft. And this is just another case where you have to just kind of employ a little bit of patience here, guys. Now, as we, we get to this part of the leaf over here, we can start introducing a little bit of that red in to the uh, equation. So I'm going to take some of that um, that's brilliant red, and I'm going to mix that into my, my orange a little bit. Now over here what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lay this in almost like a general wash and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to pull the, you see the, the thing that's different about over here, this these veins are dark on light and over here the veins are actually light lighter than the, the body of the leaf. 
So I'm going to pull the, instead of trying to paint around the veins, I'm going to put a nice wash in and then I'm going to pull it out, pull that, the vein, the lighter color of the vein out with a um, smaller brush. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lay this nice color in. And like I did before, I'm going to pull certain areas out a little bit. So I'm going to let this whole thing wash over the entire area there, but I'm going to keep it, I'm going to pull it out in bits as well. Keeping it very, very watery and, and transparent. All right, so while, while that's really nice and wet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my smaller number two brush and I'm going to just pull this, this vein out by, by using a moist brush and pulling the pigment out. It's going to take me a couple runs through to actually make it work. And it doesn't have to be so super defined either. It's okay if we keep it kind of light and feathery. Um, but you can see because the brush is moist, it's actually pulling that pigment out. It's working great. And it's actually nice and soft. It's not too, too hard of an edge on that line, which is exactly what we're looking to do. All right, so it's, again, I'm just using a moist brush, not a lot of water on it, and I'm just kind of pulling some of that pigment out. I have a piece of paper towel in my hand, and I'm pulling that paint off the brush as I pull a little bit off. Now I'm really looking at where these veins are going on, the, on my reference material so I want it to look believable and natural so So I'm just kind of unifying this a little bit. I'm, I'm adding a little bit more of the orange into some of these areas. And I'm going to spread it out. So, it, you know, we already have those little tiny defined um, veins, but I'm just kind of I'm putting a really thin wash over the top so it doesn't look so different like orange here, yellow there. So I'm kind of unifying the whole thing by adding a really light gentle wash of this red orange over the top of that and 
you can see how nice that comes together and it looks really believable. Now as we get over to this area now we have we have our green. So I'm going to use um, the light green and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wash that over this area and then pull out the veins. As I look at this green I got to be careful that I don't make it too out of the tube green. I, I have to kind of knock it down. I'm going to use a little bit of this um, this orange and just kind of kill the intensity of that green a little bit. Just make it not quite as intense. I'm going to grow a little red there. See every time I throw a little orange or red into the green I just mute it a little bit. I don't want it to be so strong that it looks weird. All right. So that's looking pretty good. I like that. I'm going to keep the mixture fairly wet and you can see it's very transparent this layer. I want this to kind of pull off real nice and easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of lay this in this whole area just like I did before. And you'll see green and orange really work well together so it's okay to just kind of let this thing cover over what we have before especially when it's a very transparent layer they kind of just blend together beautifully I know I'm going to put a vein here so I might just kind of avoid that one little spot just to help myself out a little bit and also I'm just going to kind of blend in with the direction of where those little veins are going so it has that same kind of natural look to it so over here I'm going to fade the green out as I get this way I'm going to add water to it just remember like when we did our gradated sky if you add water to the existing color and, and keep moving away you're going to get lighter in value and still have that same color. So you see I'm kind of blending this green into these other previous areas and it starts to really work work really well together. It's, it's not such one, a solid color of red or orange or green. They're all kind of blended together and working together. Kind of showing up in little spots on the other side of the leaf. So now before that dries too much, I'm going to go back in and pull, in, pull out those lighter veins. You know, if you see something going on that you don't like while it's still wet, you can still play with it and take it out. Okay, so over here I'm going to take a number two brush and I'm going to keep make, it, make sure it's moist. And I'm going to start pulling this vein out. Again, I'm holding a piece of paper towel in my hand. My brush is moist, not super duper wet. All right. And remember, guys, these have to be delicate and thin. If you make them too thick, it, they're going to look awkward. I could have gone a little lighter over here, but I can kind of manipulate that paint a little bit while it's still wet and maybe make it a little thinner up on the top there towards the tip of the leaf. See like over here I can kind of take this green and work it back in a little bit so it doesn't look so thick that line.
And this, this really isn't all that difficult, guys. It just takes a little bit of patience, right? A little bit of time. You can really, really make an effort to keep these little veins as thin as you can make them. You want it to look graceful, not awkward, right? The only other thing I think I might do is just kind of throw a little bit more of... Um, that darker vein in along this side here just to punch it up in the middle of a little bit Now the last thing I'll do is put that um, that stem in. I'm using kind of a red orange. I have a little bit of green mixed into it, so it's not such an intense color. And again, this has to be really delicate. 